Joining us for a conversation is Marilyn Lacasse, the Vice President of Exploration for Strike Point Gold. Ms. Lacasse, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you, Maurice. Pleasure to be here. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to be speaking with you today as we plan to deep dive into Strike Point Gold's exciting ongoing exploration programs on the flagship Willoughby Gold Silver Project and the flagship Porter Silver Project. For someone new to the value proposition, ma'am, please introduce us to Strike Point Gold and the opportunity the company presents to shareholders. Well, as mentioned, Maurice, Strike Point Gold has two flagship projects. So you'd have Willoughby and uh, Porter, both located in the Polyphic Golden Triangle in Northwest British Columbia, Canada. So let's just start off with Porter. It's uh, basically two kilometers to the northwest of the town of Stewart. Um, Basically, the property is composed with two past producers, conveniently located on either either side of Mount Rainey. So that would be Porter and uh, Silverado Mine. And then uh, if we jump to our other exciting flagship project, we would have the Willoughby property located a bit uh, further to northwest, seven kilometer west of the Red Mountain deposit acquired in 2019 by Ascot Resources from IDM Mining. Um, so those are kind of like in the grand sum uh, our two uh, exciting projects here. Very compelling. Now, before we begin, allow me to congratulate you, ma'am, on your newly appointed position as the Vice President of Exploration for Strike Point Gold. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's quite the compliment when you have Sean Kunkun. He's the CEO of Strike Point Gold. When he personally handpicks and entrusts you to increase the value for shareholders, that's just that's icing on the cake. What a compliment. Yes, it is, I guess. Um, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I'm quite happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, before we go on site, let's get familiar with who you are and what makes you qualified for the task at hand. Well, let's see what makes me a qualified individual. Well, I might start by saying that I ran the exploration program at Red Mountain, um, basically, which is adjacent to the current our current flagship Willoughby from 2017 to 2019 prior to the acquisition there. Um, I build a range of expertise there, which span from grassroots exploration to pre-feasibility study, underground drilling, high angle mentoring, geology, to name a few. And I'm therefore quite familiar with the geology in the region of in that section of the Golden Triangle anyways. Um, through that, I've created also a numerous amount of connection, which I cherish through contractors and local community, which empower me to, empowered me, sorry, to execute projects at a very cost-effective and without compromising quality. I also bring a baggage of knowledge acquired from other projects from central British Columbia to Quebec. Now you've had several opportunities to take your town somewhere else what compelled you to join the team at strike point gold well i would say definitely the projects but uh more importantly the team the people behind it knowledge base within this group is quite impressive from technical advisor board director to market professionals Um, it allows us to consider results uh consider results business proposition on multiple facets which is quite uh, a key here now speaking of the willoughby gold silver project Take us on site and let's get everyone acquainted with the opportunity before us. Please share some of the highlights of the project. Willoughby has an impressive track record of delivering high grade um, silver gold result. Historically, to name a few, we had seven gram gold over 11 meters to 350 gram gold over three meters. And since Strike Point acquired it in 2019, we had similar positive result. So seven gram gold over 10, over in a wider interval of three gram gold over 40 and 100 gram gold over one within a four meters at 26 gram gold. Um, There's eight mineralized zone there on the property, seven of those are on the noon attack and one is located a kilometer northeast um, across the ice. Um, Well, the opportunity there, I guess there's a lot of smoke. Where there's lots of smoke, there might be some interest. So the geological team is working hard at connecting the dots, understanding the mineralization control there. That might link to multiple zone. Uh, mineralization extent, as I said, is over a kilometer. And additionally, the intrusive there, the driver of your system, basically bear close similarities with the gold slot intrusive, which is located uh, right across at Red Mountain and is linked to mineralization there. And what are the four key takeaways to remember about the Willoughby? Well, four takeaway things, basically in a big, like a deposit that would be sizable. One, you want a driver. So you want something that brings in your fluids. So in this case, it's our intrusion. Uh, basically, it's a biotite fair intrusion that 
is basically thought to be coeval, uh, basically same timing as the gold side intrusive linked at mineralization at Red Mountain. So that's your driver, brings the fluid. Two, you need basically something to channel the fluid. You need conduit or pathway. At the property here would be deep seated fault, which are north northwest fault that host mineralization within the intrusive and channel uh, their mineralization within the volcanic package, which then brings me to tree. You need some sort of like permeable host if your mineralization is not in the intrusive that will basically stop, like hold the mineralization in place, which in our case here is uh, basically coarse appealing tufts. And four, for the golden triangle, you need to be in the right uh, age group, so right rock package. And uh, that's mostly Jurassic. That's where we find the biggest deposit in the golden triangle. So our intrusion is um, Jurassic, early Jurassic. So is uh, the Aselton group, which is what is the host rock currently. Now, to truly appreciate the value proposition, take us back to the genesis of the project and provide us with some historical content on the Willoughby. Well, sure. Um, so the exploration at Willoughby started in 89 uh, with a couple of lull and change in operators until 96. Um, through that time, 12,000 meters of drilling were completed in 189 holes, along with 110 uh, meters of underground workings. Um, result, as mentioned previously, were quite impressive. So just to name a couple more, so 120 gram gold with coupled with 2,000 gram silver over 3.5 meters and like 20 grams gold and 42 grams silver over like pretty much seven meters. Well, let's find out more. Please walk us through the genetic model. Sure. So um, the goal is always to find more shiny rocks here. Um, so there's two different styles of mineralization at Willoughby depending on what is the host rock. Um, to the north, the mineralization is structurally controlled and um, steep north northwest uh, fall cutting the biotite ferric intrusive. Those mineralized veins intercept typically, typically have bonanza grades that are three to five meter wide and often have visible gold in them. Um, good example from that would be the 2019 result in whole uh, W2194, 20, which returned a, me a meter at 100 gram gold and 356 grams silver uh, within a wider interval of four meters. Uh, 26 gram gold and 95 uh, gram ton silver. This type of mineralization is observed in two of our zones, so at the north and north north. Um, second type of mineralization is uh, strat stratigraphically controlled within the more permeable coarse lapilli tufts, um, strata in the Jurassic volcanic rock package. It's also linked uh, with sills of uh, the intro that I just described. Uh, mineralization for these zones are typically lower grade. Uh, but higher tonnage, so silver is also also typically lower. Good example for this would be a type of mineralization we intercepted in the 2020 drilling from Pola uh, W2106, which yields seven meters at 10 grams gold, five uh, grams silver within a broader interval of 40 meters at three gram gold and 13 grams silver. Um, we observe that type of mineral mineralization in the six remainder of our zones. So that would be will be edge, will key, Icefall, Upper and Lower, and Willow. Well, those are some very nice high grades there. Now, is there a, uh, what is the preferred time period when the minerals were formed and are there any associated minerals? Yeah, sure. So timing, as I said, for the Golden Triangle um, is uh, the best is Jurassic. At Willoughby, our timing is thought to be Jurassic as mineralization is within, uh, hosted within the Lower Isleton group and the mineralization driver is interpreted to be um, the biotite ferric intrusive, which we believe is comagmatic with the gold slide intrusive at Red Mountain that was dated early Jurassic. Mineralization is typically either like um, stratigraphically controlled or vein or typically associated with massive to semi-massive pyrite pyrotite and lesser sphalerite galena and arsenal pyrite. And finally, what dimensions is the deposit likely to have? Well, that's a good question. That's one that the geological team is still working hard on, but I would say that, you know, we have a definite defined like metalized extent over a kilometer and average width from two to 10 meters. So there's potential for a very big system here. Now, as I'm looking at the map before me, there's a, a deep red line. What is the significance of the red line? Well, the red line uh, in the Golden Triangle is an important marker that is linked to most of the 
large deposit. It usually, the large deposits are here within a two kilometer min window of that schematic line. Um, so for the Willoughby deposit, it, we're within this window. And also it has a characteristic feature that are linked to major deposit within, within those areas. So the classic sequence, deep seated structure uh, for this project would be the property wide North fault within two kilometers and a fluid driver, which is the biotite ferric intrusive. It bears close similarities, as I said, with the gold slot intrusive that we see at Red Mountain that is linked with basically uh, fluids there. Now you've laid the groundwork for us on the historical work and the genetic model. Before we get into the 2021 drill program, please get us up to speed on what work Strike Point has conducted to demonstrate your proof of concept. Yeah, so from acquisition of the property, so 2019 to 2020, Strike Point has completed uh, pretty much shy of 3,800 meters of drilling. So 2000 of the, those were done in 2019. We focus on confirming historical grades at the North Zone and Willoughby and extending mineralization along Strike. And then 1,700 meters were done in 2020 with focus on narrowing gaps between middle life zone from north to south. Along with that, we conducted a significant um, mapping and surface sampling, which basically we collected 232 grabs. Um, all this drilling and data we collected definitely contributed to the concept presented today. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Last year, Strike Point Gold conducted 4,050 meters of core drilling in 17 holes. Please walk us through your exploration model. And since you're boots on the ground, any golden nuggets that you'd like to share with us that have piqued your interest? No, yeah, for sure. So in 2021, we set out for our biggest field and drilling programs to date at Willoughby. That is for Strike Point. We targeted four main areas. So Southern Age, edge of the property. So upper and lower icefall with extensive chip channel sampling. Um, across and long mineralized horizon at surface. This allowed us to tremend a tremendous amount of excellent quality data that could be subsequ subsequently added to a potential resource model. Basically, it's cheap drilling um, because at Red Mount, uh, sorry, at Willoughby, like there's Gaussian everywhere. So it's just mineralized everywhere. So if we could sample at surface, that is much better. Then secondly, we targeted the extension of the mineralized horizon between will be an edge zone that we defined in 2020 uh, by stepping out from hole W2106, up dip and down dip. Thirdly, we followed up on positive surface result in 2020 at the edge with drilling and extensive chip channel sampling um, there to add to the data collected with the concurrent drilling. And fourth and last, we drilled at the Willow, from which we had a good surface result in 2020. The Willow is located a kilometer northeast um, of the seven other zone, as I previously mentioned, and it has similar stratigraphically controlled mineralization that we observe on the noon attack. Drilling there is key to extend mineralization and potentially like ground truth or interest there that there's a kilometer of strike mineralization. Now, back in December, Strike Point Gold released some encouraging results from both channel samples and step out drilling. How were the results and uh, how does the results or what did the results indicate to you? Well, the result were quite positive, as I said. So uh, they basically confirmed that we stepped out up dip and down, down dip from um, the whole W2106. There, uh, we stepped out basically 25 meter up dip and 25 meter down dip, narrowed the gap between mineralization and next year in 2022, we're definitely gonna go back and uh, just keep stepping up the up and down dip from that. Now, you know, I have to ask you this, but do we have a timeline when we can expect the remaining assay results from the program from last year? Well, I sure have a timeline <laughs> plan here. Um, so we're looking at uh, basically all our drill results. So that would be drilling results from Porter, a remainder of Porter and remainder of Willoughby there uh, to come out uh, hopefully by the end of February here. And then following that, we also have all our remainder of chip channel sampling from Edge that's not released, along with uh, the property-wide and regional uh, mapping kind of exploration there. So hopefully by early March for that. Now, as compelling as the Willoughby Gold Silver Project sounds, I'm actually more intrigued about the past producing high-grade Porter Silver Project. To find out why, Ms. Lacasse, please introduce us to the Porter Silver Project and the potential before us. What is quite compelling at Porter is the two kilometer of unexplored ground in between the two past producing uh, mines there. It's interesting 
Why? Because the vein on either side have similar orientation. So 165. Uh, striking 165 they think 50 at silver on the silverado side and striking 150 they think 55 on the porter side so the geological concept here proposed is that it could very well be connected which would then in turn increase mineralization extent significantly now what do we know about the historical content on the porter project so historically uh, porter has quite a rich uh, story there so porter contained two past producing mine as i just said Port which produced from 1929 to 1931, and then shut down due to fall in silver price. And the Silverado mine to the northwest of Mount Rainey had sporadic production in the 50s. Port Idaho has uh, six silver bearing shears, uh, structure ranging from one to five meter width. So that's Prosperity, B Vein, Wake, Line, and Jello, and Prosperity West. And Silverado has four silver bearing shears originally named Vein 1 to 4. Now, as I'm looking at the image of the Porter Project, there's a glacier known as the Silverado Ice Sheet. How does that fit into the narrative? Well, that's accurate. The two kilometers of unexplored ground is covered on surface by the Silverado Ice Sheet, which has receded since then and enabled us to extend the surface expression of the D vein, notably in 2020. And during the 2021 season, our field team went out and worked out the area to position our drill for 2022 to test the theory, which was dubbed the big flex. So basically test the connection and the continuation of the mineralization between the two past producers. Can you walk us through the genetic model? Sure can. So mineralization is thought to be Eocene at Porter and Silverado and is hosted within shear zones or sub-parallel quartz vein containing pargerite, argentiferous, galena, native silver, and accessory calcopyrite sphalerite. Mineralization range from one to five meter width and mineralized zone or shears or space within 150 to 200 meters apart. What work has been done to date on the border? Well, since StrikePoint acquired the property, reconnaissance drilling was done in 2018. Detailed field mapping was conducted at Porter and Silverado within the fault lowing highlights in 2020. So basically, as I mentioned, we extended 50 meters new mineralization there with 250 grams silver um, parallel to the past producing prosperity vein. So found a new shear, new prosperity vein, surface expression. So outline that as well. Uh, we extended the D-vein uh, mineralized trend to the north, which is toward the Silverado ice sheet. So that's 200 meter extension. Uh, and uh, we narrowed the mineralization, therefore narrowed the mineralization gap between Prosperity, Porter, Idaho, and the Silverado mine. On the Silverado side, we found new surface expression from vein number two. Um, so extension there of the vein number two. So we also outlined new surface expression of the Vein number four at Silverado. Um, so stunning result there, 1300 gram ton silver. Now that we have an overview of both the Willoughby and the Porter project, before we close, ma'am, what would you like to say to shareholders? Well, to recap to the shareholders and potential shareholders out there, um, Strikepoint Gold projects are in the Golden Triangle in Canada, which is a stable mining jurisdiction. Two of our flagship project has delivered high grade result historically and in all past expiration year uh, for strike point here. Our team is highly skilled and driven, working hard at delivering value to expiration. I hope you all stay tuned for more great expiration news in the coming months. And for the virtues you've conveyed today, just for full disclosure, I'm an active buyer of strike point gold. Last question, ma'am. What did I forget to ask? Well, I think there's a lot of question here. So for now, I don't think there's anything else. For someone that wants to learn more about StrikePoint Gold, please share the website address. So our website address is uh, basically strikepointgoldaltogether.com. Ms. Lacasse, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today. Wishing you and StrikePoint Gold the absolute best, ma'am. 
The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.